Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the third week of Scent. We're going to be going through chapter three today. Today is chapter three, Jesus is God with us. And I'm back here with my daughter, Mariah. Mariah, can you say hi? Hi. And I have another Christmas question for you. Okay. Yeah. What is your favorite Christmas song? Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Do you want to sing that for everybody? No? Okay, that's fine. Can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Get out of here. All right? Thank you. I got stuff to do. All right, so thank you again for joining us, and I hope that as we continue to read this together, um, that you continue to find it meaningful throughout this season. Um, I found it to be um, a good, solid, and helpful, and hopeful study for us. And I found this chapter to be especially hopeful. Um, this is this chapter three is really written by Justin LaRosa, and he begins by telling this very difficult and powerful story about his wife's terrible uh, experience giving birth to their son, who came awfully early in their life, and the fear and the trouble they went through uh, in that situation. Um, so the question that I have for you today, and if you'd like to leave this as uh, a comment on our YouTube page, where have you experienced trouble in your life, and how have you seen God show up? Um, so if you'd like to continue our discussion virtually, please feel free to do that. There are several significant headings that uh, Justin LaRosa writes about throughout this chapter, and I'd like to go through them one by one uh, and just touch on them very briefly because I think all of them are very important, especially for Advent, so that we can understand why God came to us in the form of a baby, why, why God chose to be to empty himself out, uh, to, to, to come to our level, uh, to meet us, and to live our lives, and then to show us uh, our way to salvation. So first he talks about God meeting us where we are. And I love the first sentence of this section that says, our God is not indifferent. And I think that is very true. And I think that God, the idea of God meeting us where we are is a central truth to our faith. No matter where you are, whether you're in times of joy or pain or um, doubt, we need to remember that God is always with us. Um, and talking about pain, the next section here is Jesus is God. Jesus is God with us in the pain. Pain is such a central part of our life. Uh, it's something that we can't avoid. We're all going to go through difficult times. Uh, we've talked about this experience of 2020 so many times. This has been a painful year. Um, perhaps you've lost someone or you yourself have dealt with an illness. Perhaps you've been through COVID or known someone who's really struggled with that. Um, it's been painful to be separated at church for so long, and we've come back together and we're trying to figure out how to gather safely. Um, but the loss of normal is painful. Um, and I want to read to you um, John chapter 11, verses 33 through 35. Um, this is uh, in, the, in the book as well. And it says, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. We know that's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And it's interesting that they take, the, the biblical writers took those two words and set them apart. I think a part of that is to, so that we can know that God came in the form of a human being to experience life as we have experienced it, and then to show us a better way. God meets us where we are and is with us in our pain. Um, the next thing is that God is with us in our uncertainty and our fear. Um, isn't that true? Don't we hope so, especially in a year as uncertain and full of distress as this one has been. Um, and so the verse for this section is, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And that's Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Um, and the second phrase of that verse is, For I am with you. And that's what we celebrate right now. Whether we're in times of loss like this or we are fearful, God is with us, and hopefully that's something that we can hold on to. It's a truth that we can realize and find certain, and that when we are fearful, there's an anchor for our lives um, 
that allows us to step out of that fear and experience the type of life that God wants us to experience. And here is where we come to the idea of Advent. And we'll read this verse here too. But this section is, Jesus is God with us in waiting. Jesus is God with us in waiting. After this whole long, difficult year, now we have arrived. We've, we've been waiting for this year to be over. But first, we have to go through this season of waiting, which is what Advent is. We're waiting for Jesus in the form of a baby to arrive. So here is Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 6. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. But truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When we face uncertainty, when we face fear, when we face our doubts, we wait and we're hopeful that something better will come along. And we always can't express our wait and our hope and our joy with groups of people because so much of that is personal and private and it's difficult to express. But God is with us in that waiting. God is with us when we wait for uh, when we wait for the better to occur. Um, silence is difficult because it makes us uncomfortable, but sometimes we just need to stop and listen for that still small voice of God, or start stop and wait um, for God to open up something in front of us. Um, next is that the idea that God is with us in our times of joy. That's a hopeful idea. Finally, right? We talk about pain and fear and God meeting us where we are, no matter where we are. But even in this year, that's difficult. Babies have still been born. Marriages have still happened. Young people have still graduated. New connections have been made. We found new ways to be a church. Maybe they're not what we expect, but we've learned how to do things in a new way. And life has continued on. Um, and this verse comes from John chapter 16, verses 21 and 22. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away. That's a process, right, in that verse that we go through. It's a promise that we will go through difficult things. That's the reality but the promise is that something good is going to come along. And the joy that we experience in that good helps us forget about the pain that we've been through. Maybe not forget, but helps us put that pain into perspective. So God is with us in our waiting. And when we reach the joyful times, God is with us there. And that's why we praise and worship and celebrate because God enriches that as well. And now we come to the part of being sent. You are the light of the world. The town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and give, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may, that they may see good, your good deeds and glorify Father in heaven. Um, the first sentence, the first little mention it makes here. He refers to the 12-step community. You probably read this, but the 12-step community echoes the essence of this scripture with their saying about sobriety. Really let this phrase sink in. If you want to keep it, you have to give it away. I want to say that again. If you want to keep it, you have to give it away. If we believe in the promise of Advent, that God is with us no matter where we are, if he's with us in our times of pain, in our times of fear, and if that fear and pain leads us to times of great joy, that is a hopeful story. That's a truth story, true story that can reach the depths of our heart. And if we really want to make that true for ourselves, then we have to allow it to transform who we are and allow our lives to bring that truth to others. That's how we're being sent this week. So I hope that you find God in your reality today. And I hope that you allow that reality, allow God's presence with your life to push you toward those times of great joy. Whether you're in time of pain, whether you're in time of fear, 
I hope that you can rely on God enough that you can share God's presence in your life with someone else, especially in this season. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, I appreciate your time. We hope, again, that this has been a helpful study. And I want to say Merry Christmas to you as we continue on in the season. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. Take care and talk to you soon.